بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم আসসালামু আলাইকুম রহমতুল্লাহ ডিয়ার ভিউয়ার্স ওয়েলকাম আমার নাম ইসহাক আপনারা সবাইকে আমি স্বাগত জানাচ্ছি আজকে আমাদের শোটা হলো কোয়াইট অ্যামেজিং ইউ নো আমার আসলে খুব পছন্দনীয় দুজন ব্যক্তিত্ব আসছেন আমাদের সাথে ইনশাআল্লাহ আপনারা খুব খুশি হবেন আজকে আপনাদের বাচ্চারাও যদি বাসাতে থাকেন ওদেরকে নিয়ে বসান আজকে আসলে উই উইল লার্ন লটস অফ থিংস স্পেশালি প্যারেন্টিং এন্ড স্কিলস এন্ড ইফ ইউ ওয়ান্ট টু বিকম এ মিডিয়া পারসন দে আর দ্য রাইট পিপল ইফ ইউ ওয়ান্ট টু বিকম এ রাইটার অফ কোর্স দে আর দ্য রাইট পিপল টু আম let me introduce our guest first um on my right we have um brother ibrahim he's a blogger he's a tv presenter he's a director as well he made little, little clips um for uh, um is it itv or bbc something like that i mean you uh, it's on the tv so assalamu alaikum right <laughs> <laughs> okay so if you could say hello to our viewers right, assalamu alaikum i just want to say um thank you um ishad bhai for having me it's a real pleasure to be here fantastic on my left actually same thing actually sh- um she's the mother of you know i'm sure proud ibrahim and she's also a tv presenter she's a writer she wrote this book amazing you know you could see a fantastic book and she done her second one and uh, i'm sure there more coming on the way her name is and she's an activist as well locally and also she campaigns for international um, issues like rohingya um, refugees and all that stuff so welcome to our show shaida fa Assalamualaikum and um, thank you for having me. Fantastic. Um Ibrahim, you know, I've been seeing your stuff in the in, in the Facebook and other places when it's amazing, honestly. It's like hard work. No, no, honestly, I'm not joking. <laughs> um tell me how you started your journey towards uh, um media. Well, it started from third year of university, so when I was doing my degree and it was when I was part of uh university's Islamic society. So um and I was part of the committee there I was a communications officer there so I was dealing with like the IT issues um like creating the website and sharing information about events that we might be organizing so about I played quite an important role at the time they working quite closely with the president and um a producer from BBC Radio Cambridgeshire from the Sunday Faith show they got in touch with us they wanted to speak to someone from our society to come on to their show to talk about uh, this was at the time this was in 2011 where How old were you then I was just tw- I was about 20 years old coming up to 21. Mashallah so BBC coming for you man that's good. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> well, I was very lucky but um but at the time it was about um they wanted to know how our muslims were more likely to go to university in in light of the uh the raise in tuition fees because this at the time when I was at university it was about 3000 pounds tuition fees but this was at the time when the government said they were going to raise it to 9000 pounds increase it to 9000. So they wanted to see you know will this affect how many more muslims would go to university. um because uh, so i had to kind of argue about this case and see the different angles about it um you know because there might be issues with student loans um you know because i think yeah, those who want to take out loans it could be that interest is a is a problem and obviously in islam uh, interest is haram so there's other things that we had to discuss there um, about um issues there so that's where it started off from my i was a guest on the, on that show and uh, um it was quite a nerve-wracking experience there because i didn't know what to expect going on live radio especially bbc as well i thought um you know this is quite a big thing but uh, you know alhamdulillah went really well and it led to other opportunities uh, along the way especially with BBC Radio Cambridge we got to do a a Ramadan series as well so i went out as a reporter for them and we spoke to other contributors in Cambridge um so other local guests that um you know who i thought ha- you know didn't necessarily have a you know haven't had that opportunity before to talk uh you know on that kind of platform so we got to look at topics like fasting in further depth Um, oh, look at charity um food family you know, all these kind of things that ha- that take place that are quite important during Ramadan these important qualities so we look to try and dress and highlight that in a positive uh, um you know look at it in a positive way and uh, alhamdulillah you know, it was very well received and that led to doing reports on Eid al-Fitr Eid al-Adha in Cambridge and then we also did a report on um, on people who have been on Hajj or Umrah as well So that That's was really amazing, good. It was a really good opportunity to educate and in in some ways to give dawah as well I think. So it went really well. That's great. Um Shaida Fa, you know like um before we go into your books actually it's amazing you are doing so much stuff. Uh, where do you get your time from? I mean you're a campaigner, it, it, yes. you're a writer, you're a housewife and you must be very proud of Ibrahim. 
that I am, and I think it's called time management. I, I know people say um, everyone's busy and we all like to do our own things, but you can make the time to do something. Uh, but for me, it's being a role model for my children as well. Um, and it's something that I enjoy doing. Um, I didn't plan to become a, a, an author or a writer. Uh, it just happened. Um, but for me, it's about educating people, connecting with people, and uh, um, just making them aware that we're Muslims as well and giving them a positive image um, that we can be writers too, we can be uh, activists too, we can volunteer for things. So uh, for me, that's, that's really important. You also worked with BBC Radio yourself, haven't you, in Cambridge? Yes. Um, at the time, they approached me um, because they wanted me to write a series about death in Islam, so I wrote uh, four short pieces uh, about uh, death uh, and our um, our actual view, uh, you know, how we die and uh, what happens to us. So they put that on the Sunday faith show. Um, so really, it's just when there's a Muslim issue in the news, they like to pick up the phone and they call me and uh, they want an opinion. Um, and I think that that's really important to have that engagement with BBC local radio because. <laughs> There are negative stories out there, and we need to put across our own positive stories and give our own views on that. And it's very important for people to hear it. Was it difficult to write about death? I mean, you had to. I'm sure you had to do studies before you write it down. Uh, yes, uh, it was okay, you know, because we've experienced death uh, in the family. My father passed away when I was only 13, and I lost my twin sister at the age of 25. So, I think seeing that it made us realise that what life is really about. Um, it, it put a different spin on all of our lives. It was like almost um, a tap on the shoulder just to wake up to ourselves and think, you know, Allah can take away anyone at any time. Um, so, you know, I sort of focused on that issue, you know, what we saw and how we went through and w exactly what we went through. And I think um, the Islamic perspective and, and that's what BBC Radio wanted to actually hear um, our experiences of death. I think this year, to you're a local activist as well. You do a lot of stuff locally. Um, yeah. You was going to become a councillor yourself one yes, time. Yes, that's right. I stood in 2015 in the general election year. That was the first time uh, for the Liberal Democrats in Cambridge, and I stood in 2016. Um, I came second twice, but because it was, uh, I'm the only um, Bangladeshi um, person to stand for Liberal Democrats. So it was building up. Uh, a campaign, um, a portfolio as well, uh, because it, it's not easy to go out there to talk to people. They have to trust you. You're talking to them. You want to help them with local issues. Um, and we don't have any Bangladeshi councillors uh, in Cambridge City Council, uh, but I want to be able to do that to help our own community. I mean, that's what you do it for. You don't do it for yourself. You, you do it to help people. Um, and it's, I think it's really important to be engaged in that kind of activity and not sit back and let someone else do the work for you, you know, be involved in that and uh, see what difference you can make to other people's lives. It's so great, you know. <coughs> I forgot to mention one of your um, younger children also writer as well. I mean, amazing. She writes poem and poem. Yes, that's right. I've, I've got a If you could mention here. her, it would be great. Yes. Her name and um, she's watching. Yes, she's, uh, I mean, uh, yes, yeah, she's 13 uh, and she likes poems. She, l she writes uh, poems. I don't write poetry myself. Neither does Ibrahim, but um, I did write one poem once. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Uh, yeah, yes. when I was about eleven. Was um, but fun, she just yeah. she just has this talent for it. She just c can come out with words, and uh, uh, we published a, a, a selection uh, of her poems. And it's just something that she enjoys doing. So when she's got nothing better to do, just put pen to paper and uh, just see how the words come out. Fantastic. Really. Do you have any any special one here? I mean, we at, at the end, I might ask you to do one of them. Um, yes, uh, I, I think there right. is one. Uh, yes. But she's she, you know, likes to write all sorts of things. So uh, she's had um, one poem published uh, in a young writer's anthology, uh, and another two have been accepted. But I think it's good for children to be engaged in something different. Um, we all say, you know, we want our children to do lots of different things, and uh, but with poetry, I think you really have to have it in you to be able to write poems. And I'm not a poetry person, so I think you know, I'm very proud that we've got a poet in the Marshall. family. So. Uh, if Amina are watching, uh, well done. Um, uh, Ibrahim, I'm going to um, move to you now. Um, as a young person, you know, going into BBC Radio and the expectation from our community, especially in, in Cambridge, and um, was it a 
pressure building up on you, like, oh, they're expecting me to do this, 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 can I do it? Was it a difficult thing to take on? No, not particularly. I mean, because when, when I went to meet the producer and the presenter of the show at the time, when, and they told me, we'd like you to uh, do something on Ramadan, I was actually really excited because, one, you know, I found, you know, I, I really enjoy Ramadan, and I think that it's one area of Islam that I feel that I know quite a lot about. So I found that quite interesting and you know, it was a really good opportunity to uh, try and educate you know, non-Muslims particularly about what this month is all about. And, but also at least try and do something with the wider community in Cambridge as well and to show, look, you know, here's an opportunity that we can do and you know, really show people what Ramadan is all about, and particularly within Cambridge. So I found it quite exciting and uh, it was a really good opportunity. In to the same thing, also here. learning process, you, you had to do lots of research and all that stuff before you present. Yeah, yeah, there was some. Uh, there was plenty of research to do as well. You know, thinking about what kind of guests to bring on, you know, who to interview, and because uh, we wanted like a, we wanted to show something where there was something that shows a diverse range of people in Cambridge, and because you know, there are people from various backgrounds in Cambridge. You know, we don't just have Bangladeshis; there are Pakistanis, we have um, many Arabs as well. So there's a, a range of people there. So it was about trying to show that diversity and show how people do Ramadan in different ways, really, in terms of how they might break their fast, what kind of food will they have, you know, how do they spend time with their family, or you know, do they spend time with family at all. So there's lots of different ways of seeing how everyone fasts. Did you have any course? Uh, did you have to do any courses before uh, doing that, or you done that some course later on? Um, no, I actually came in there with no journalistic qualification or anything. I, I never studied media at all. So the reason I think that they were keen to take me on is because I showed that enthusiasm to want to do it. You know, I told them that this is something I'm really keen to do. I'd love to do more of this if there are other opportunities. And so I think I managed to win them over because of you know my enthusiasm and you know just that uh, willingness to want to do this. Uh, because I told them that you know this is something I would love to do more of and uh, and see where it leads to. So you know, alhamdulillah, I'm just grateful I had that that, that opportunity. Fantastic. We're gonna go for a small break now, inshallah. After the break, we'll talk about. Um, Especially Lashkar, I'm so uh, excited to know about. You know, a lot of things that I'm sure we'll learn from this. So, when I show my dad, I said, I said, I'm a little complain. I look at a boy, I said, I'm a little they're not doing well. And Tara um, showed they don't have a role model anymore. Or they're struggling at home, with like mm -hmm. for a generational gap is an issue as well. But after looking to the Ram, got out some of the year. You, you, you got uh, five children, I'm assuming? Yeah, we got four. Four, yes. sorry. Yeah. Okay. Three sons and a daughter. And yeah. um, Air Force, after the time, I was enough now. Um, community yeah. like Air Force, they're also campaigning for uh, refugees in mm. other places. Mm. You know, it's, it's amazing to see the Afnad, the effort, Hamon Lager, because so yeah. this is amazing for me, honestly. I think. Um, you have to put yourself out there if you really believe in something, you want to help uh, somebody. Don't wait for someone to do it for you, you know, go out and do it. Because I think Islamically it's our duty to help other people and that's exactly what we're supposed to do. Uh, I think for me it just comes naturally and I want to be able to teach my children, you know, go out and help people. And Can I come back to on that after the yeah, break? Yeah, of course. So, I'm going to tell you about the fact that I'm going to tell you about the fact that after our break for a month, inshallah, we'll talk about a lot of lot more, and that will probably benefit lots of people as well. After our bachelor, we'll finish that. Can you see, inshallah? I see you after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.